um, about building reactions, building and balancing chemical reactions. So, so far, when we do problems, I give you the reaction. And sometimes I have you balance it, sometimes I don't. And then we do problems based on that reaction. But now I'm going to ask you to go a step further and to build the reaction itself. Okay? So we're going to, we're going to basically um, give you the reactants of the reaction, and you're going to have to predict the products or predict the outcome. And you'll have to build and balance those compounds. Okay, so we're always going to be working with double displacement reactions. They're the easiest to do in terms of building and balancing. So anytime I ask you to build a reaction, it'll be a double displacement. Okay, so you'll, you'll have very clear kind of guidelines as to what's going to form with that reactant. Okay, and with that reaction. But in order to, to be good at building and balancing reactions, we have to be able to build correct chemical formulas. Right? It's going to be all ionic formulas. So that's where we do the crisscross. We get them nice and balanced and, and neutral. And then we're able to put them into our chemical reaction. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and just dive right in. Okay? The first one we're going to start with, it says sodium nitrate reacts with calcium fluoride to create whatever. Right? That's what we're going to be looking at here. And so we're going to do that all together. You will need your periodic table of ions out because these are all going to be ionic compounds. We want to make sure that they are neutral. And then once we have all of our compounds in, then we'll go back and balance the actual chemical reaction. So we're going to start with sodium nitrate. These are both reactants. Sodium nitrate and calcium fluoride are the reactants. And then we don't know what our products are yet. Right, we'll figure that out in just a little bit. But sodium nitrate, when I'm doing this, I'm going to recommend, right, we start with sodium, which is plus one, nitrate, which is NO3 minus one. So, how are those going to come together to form a compound? No, we don't need to do anything with the times three because nitrate is NO3 as a whole. Just N-A-N-O-3. N-A-N-O-3. Because they're both ones, right? It's a positive one and a negative one charge. So they're going to fit together without having to add any more molecules to that. Okay, do we understand that part? Okay, calcium fluoride. We're going to start with C-A, which has what charge? Two. Plus two. And fluoride, which is a just the F, and its charge is? Negative one. So how are these two going to fit together? We'll crisscross them down. That leaves us with CaF2. Right? Yes. Do we need to put nope. We don't put parentheses unless we need more than one of them. If there was supposed to be a two out here, then we would put parentheses around it. But there's not. So if, it's just, if we just need one nitrate, we don't have to put parentheses. Okay, so there is our two reactants. Now we have to figure out what are our products going to be, right? It's a double displacement reaction, which means I'm looking for sodium and fluoride to come together, and I'm looking for calcium and nitrate to come together. Do we agree with that part? But here's the deal. We can't just do NaF2 because... F has a two there and NA has a one. It, you can't just assume the subscripts are going to be the same. Okay? You cannot. You have to build sodium fluoride from the ground up. So sodium is plus one. Fluoride is minus one. So how do those go together? Just NAF. We will worry about the two fluorines after we're done, we'll go back and balance our full reaction. Okay, so don't try to get it balanced as you're building the compounds. Just build the compounds correctly first, and then we'll go back and balance it. Okay? So CA and NO3 need to come together. Does NO3 get listed first? No. no why not? 
it always has to go cation, then anion. And calcium is the cation, right? Calcium is plus 2 and NO3 minus 1. Sorry, it's kind of dark there on the edge. Yes, go ahead. I've heard you've said this before, but do you always do like the two outside and then the two inside? Oh, it doesn't matter the order which we would list NAF or the... Is that what your question was? Or always do like the NA and the F. And the yeah, F. NA would never get partnered with CA because they're both positives. Oh, okay. okay right? Good. Yep, so for a double displacement, we take the, the cation from one and the anion from the other, which means sodium has to go with fluorine and then calcium has to go with nitrate. Was that the question? Yeah. Yes, so for double displacement, it will always go outsides go together. That's okay. It will always go outsides go together and insides go together. Okay. But they won't, like the insides, you'll have to switch the order gotcha. because it's got to go cation, then anion. Okay. okay, so if I go back to calcium nitrate, I crisscross this down, which means I have Ca1NO32. But what do I have to have? I got to have parentheses because I need two of these nitrates. That was where we need parentheses there. Okay. Do I ever, am I ever going to adjust the three within nitrate right there? No. No. Right. Once you have a polyatomic ion that you're working with, SO4, NO3, PO4, whatever it is, that part of that polyatomic ion is not adjusted. Okay. So now I have my... Let me get rid of all my scribbles there. Oop, okay. Now that I have my formulas done correctly, now we're going to balance the total equation. Okay, we need to actually balance our reaction. So I'm going to start probably, I think we can start maybe working without the list and speed it up just a little bit, right? Do we feel kind of comfortable with that? So I'm going to start where I think it's the obvious choice, at least for me it's obvious, with this, which is nitrate. Mm -hmm. I have two nitrates here, and I only have one on the left-hand side, so I'm going to go ahead and just make that a two. And so I know my nitrates are good, but what other element did that affect? Sodium. sodium. So now I'm going to kind of bounce over here and say, okay, well now I know I need two sodium, so I'm going to put a two there. And what did that affect besides sodium? It affected fluorine, so now I come and look on the other side like, oh, I already have two fluorines, so that's good. And then I check my last element, which is calcium, and it's one and one. Okay, so do you see how you can do it without the list if you kind of just back, back and forth, right? You'll kind of bounce yourself back and forth from there. Okay, so there is our built and balanced chemical reaction. Okay, so I'll give you a second to get written down if you need to. I don't think these are problems you probably need to write all the way out, but you're welcome to do so if you want. Um, if I combine lithium phosphate and aluminum nitrate, what will my products be? Build a balanced reaction. All right, so let's start with our reactants. <clears throat> lithium phosphate and aluminum nitrate. Okay, so what's lithium's charge? Li plus one. Phosphate is PO4 minus three. Right. Do you guys remember when I was like, memorize the polyatomic ions, like it'll be helpful. And you guys are like, oh, Miss Noel, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm not doing it. Okay. This is why it speeds up your, your process a lot, right? If I'm not constantly having to search for phosphate on my periodic table, if I just know it's PO4 minus three, you're just going to save yourself a lot of time. Okay. So if I'm putting these into a, a formula, I'm going to crisscross them down. And so that leaves me with Say it together, Li3PO4 three. Three. And then I would need a one outside of that, but I just leave that off if I need that one, right? No parentheses are necessary there. Okay, so that's my first reactant. My second one is aluminum nitrate. So Al, and what's its charge? Plus three. Plus three. Nitrate is NO3. 
3 minus 1. Okay, so I'm going to crisscross these down. That leaves me with A L what? One. Just A L 1, right? Which we don't have to write the 1. A L, then what? N O 3, parentheses 3, right? I'm bringing that 3 from aluminum down to the outside here. Can I reduce those? No, I cannot. I don't reduce those down because I never can touch that subscript, right? Nitrate, NO3 is nitrate's identity. So we don't change that. Yes, Christian. What do you mean by reduce? Okay, so if I had a compound, this is made up, but if I had a compound, uh, actually, we're going to see it in just a second with aluminum phosphate. Okay, okay I'll show you in just a second. Okay. Now, if we go double displacement, that means lithium and nitrate need to come together and aluminum phosphate need to come together, right? We agree with that part? Mm -hmm. Outsides come together, insides come together. So lithium nitrate, I'm going to start that from scratch. Li plus 1 NO3. Minus one. How are those going to fit together? L Just LiNO3, right? They're both ones. So we should see that we don't really need to do the crisscross there, right? It's a plus one, minus one. So they just go together. Okay. And then my last one's going to be aluminum and phosphate, right? Aluminum and phosphate. So aluminum is plus three. Phosphate is PO4 minus three. Okay, can we see that naturally these go together one to one? Yeah. Yes, but if you didn't and you did crisscross them down, you would be left with this, Al3PO4-3, in which case those, Christian, could be reduced. This three and this three can be reduced down to just be one to one. So we noticed that they can just go together one to one, Al-PO4. If you didn't, you would have had these threes here and they would have needed to be reduced. Okay, if you don't reduce those things down, again, it's not going to balance. Your equation is not going to balance, so you got to make sure you do that, okay, if it's reducible. Okay, let's go ahead and balance our reaction then. Um, first place to start, what do you want to start with? Lithium. lithium. Okay, so we've got three lithiums on the left. So the obvious thing for me to do is put a three there. And so that affects lithium and it affects nitrate. So I come look on the left. Okay, nitrate already has three. So that's good. Now I just look for another element. Um, aluminum has one and one. So that's good. And then phosphate has one and one. So really that's all we needed was that three right there. Okay, and we are balanced. So that is a correct build and balance. Okay. How do we feel about doing that? Pretty good. Okay. Now let's put a stoichiometry problem with it. I'm going to copy this equation. So we'll still have it. Oh, undo that. No, no, no. Okay. Sorry. All right, here we go. What mass of aluminum nitrate will it take to produce 311.2 grams of aluminum phosphate? I'm going to put my reaction up top so we've got a little bit more room. I know I'm not. All right, what mass of aluminum nitrate? So I'm looking at aluminum nitrate. That's my reactant right here. So I'm searching for the number of grams of aluminum nitrate. Will it take to produce 311.2 grams of aluminum phosphate? So aluminum phosphate's over here. 311.2 grams is what I'm starting with. Okay, do we feel comfortable about how we picked those out? 
Okay, we knew which one was which. Okay. So let's start our problem. We always start our stoichiometry problem with with what we know. Thank you. Okay, we know that we have 311.2 grams of ALPO4. Okay, so do we want to map out where we're going to go? We're going to go from a grams of aluminum phosphate to what? Okay, no, I want each step. Okay, so grams of aluminum phosphate to moles of aluminum phosphate. Then to moles of... Good, aluminum nitrate. Then finally to grams of aluminum nitrate. Good, I feel like we're getting there a little bit. So grams of Al... PO4 to moles. ALPO4. Do you guys like to put the numbers in as you go? Yeah. yeah? All right, let's go ahead and calculate molar mass then of ALPO4. Moles here gets the one, and we'll find molar mass of aluminum phosphate. Okay. So molar mass here came out to 122. I've canceled grams of aluminum phosphate. Now I'm going to keep working to get rid of moles of ALPO4 and go to moles of ALNO3. Okay, and so what's that step of my react of my equation called? The mole ratio. Good. This is called the mole ratio step. Okay? And so where do those numbers come from in the mole ratio step? Good. They come from the balance reaction, which these both happen to be ones. Okay. They both happen to be ones. So I'm going to cancel those units. Finish going from moles of aluminum nitrate to grams of aluminum nitrate. Okay. So moles here gets the one also, and then I'm going to calculate grams of aluminum nitrate. Make sure that when we're calculating molar mass of that compound, that three here goes to both nitrogen and to oxygen. Okay, the three on the outside. So how many nitrogens do I have? I have three nitrogens and how many oxygens do I have? Nine. So molar mass for that compound, I have it at 213. Does that sound right? 213, okay. So now I've canceled all my units correctly. And I'm going to go ahead and multiply across the whole top, divide by the whole bottom. Five hundred and forty three point three grams. Okay. Questions about that chart, the build and balance, anything that went into that one? Why is um the top in a three? I thought it was supposed to be PO. So our goal is to end up in grams of aluminum nitrate. Right? To these ones are, I canceled aluminum phosphate moles right here. And then I converted two moles of aluminum nitrate in that step. So now I'm in moles of aluminum nitrate. And then I got rid of moles of aluminum nitrate to end up in grams of aluminum nitrate. Okay, so what I want is always going to be up in this top right corner of my chart. Okay.